What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today, I was gonna show you how to replant my spider plant. More specifically, Chlorophytum camosum. This is the Hawaiian spider plant. I got this one from Myers probably almost a year ago, somewhere along that. Uh, it's kind of old, uh, but as you can tell, it's starting to outgrow its little pot that it came in. Uh, and they have really, really, really thick, fleshy, tuberous roots. So you want to be well aware of that. Plastic is generally the best pot to put them in. If you do any kind of clay or terracotta, the roots get so big and they hold on to so much water that uh, they will burst the pot. Now, uh, chlorophytum camosum, the spider plant, they do like to be relatively uh, pot bound and that does kind of help them out with the roots and they're kind of like the little spiderettes that come off the side. Uh, so they do kind of perform best if they're pot bound, but then you kind of cross the line of when to take them out. Uh, they'll break the pot, as I was saying. So uh, you'll kind of want to get a plastic pot or something that won't break as easily. So I'm going with a kind of wire pot with the cocoa in there. Now, you want to get one that's not way bigger than the plant itself. And as I was saying, these roots are going to be massive. They need a lot of room to kind of grow out and, you know, just do whatever they do naturally. You do want to have a lot of room for them. I think this pot that I'm putting in is 14 inches. The pot that it was in is 6 with the roots. The way they go, I think it'll be just fine. Now, I'm going to use a kind of cacti succulent citrus mixture just because uh, the spider plant does not like to sit in saturated soil for too long. So this cocoa will drain relatively easy. It will not hold on to any kind of water whatsoever and the substrate that I'm using will not either. So uh, you want to do something for them that won't hold on a whole lot of water. So uh, make sure you take that into consideration as well. I'm gonna have my work cut out for me because I can tell that this pot is really tight. So I'm gonna remove the hanging part first and then I'll probably have to cut him out of his pot just because he's in there really good. Now as I always say, if you're gonna be taking a plant out of its pot or repotting a plant, always water at least a night or two before you plan to actually do that because that'll make it a whole lot easier with the roots and separating it and everything. So make sure you do give it a really good watering a day or two before you plan on repotting it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling it up with the substrate. Now I just filled it up probably about two thirds of the way. Uh, and then I left a little divot down in there to make sure that I can kind of give him room just to kind of set him in there. Now, as I always say, keep your little garbage can underneath you or something just to collect all this soil so that you don't have a huge mess to clean up. And hopefully, he'll just slide right out. Yeah, beautiful. So if you've watered your plant a day or two before, separating these roots and knocking off all this excess soil won't be too bad. Now, if you do this really dry, you'll be here hours, maybe even days. So do yourself a favor and make sure you kind of water it really well so that when you go to separate it, it'll be really easy. And then all you need to do is just knock off all the excess soil there ever so gently with your hands and just give yourself a little bit of time. Have some patience. And also, when you pick out your substrate, you want to go for something that doesn't have any kind of fluoride in there. Spider plants are particularly sensitive to that chemical um, or compound, so you want to make sure that it doesn't have any kind of fluoride in there. So a general all-purpose potting soil will work as long as it doesn't have that in there. I use the miracle Grow cactus and succulent citrus version. It didn't say it had any fluoride in it. I looked, but it may have some in it, but not as much as an all-purpose potting soil would have in it. Now, you'll want to knock off as much of this excess soil as possible. Uh, that way you can expose a bunch of the roots and kind of give them a little once-over to make sure that uh, you don't see any kind of black or mushy parts. That would be indicative of some rot. Uh, so if you do see anything like that, just cut it off. Make sure you cut about an inch to a half inch into the good part of uh, the root 
so that you'll knock off any of the disease part that you can and then just kind of look at your leaves too to make sure you don't see any bite marks or any kind of brown tips or anything that might show that it's uh, suffering a little bit now leave yourself a good little root ball uh, that way you don't start separating the plant and then I will take my pruning shears which have been sanitized and I will start trimming some of these roots off that way they'll have plenty of room to grow in there and don't forget you can remove about three quarters of the roots off without actually hurting the plant but once you get over that uh, you could start hurting your plant so uh, feel free to just trim vigorously just as long as you leave about a quarter of what you started with now me I don't have to prune too much because I'm going to be leaving quite a bit of room in there with this decent sized pot that I chose. Alright, so just be very careful because uh, the little parts of the plant will actually start to kind of fall off. But if you just support it with your hand, you'll be in pretty good shape. Now I'll just take the root ball and just kind of set him down in there. And then all the excess soil off to the side, just use your hand to kind of scoop it back down in there towards the root ball. I'll help hold your plant in place. Start adding soil in until we get it right where we want it. And then just take care not to just cover up a bunch of leaves. And then as you add soil, just kind of tap it down with your hands to kind of get rid of any air bubbles that might be down in there in the soil that will damage your roots. Now take care not to go well over the sides because uh, this will keep water from running off the edges there whenever you go to apply water. So just kind of come up to the sides and you don't have to really go over them with the soil. Just kind of remain flush that way the plant won't spill a whole bunch whenever you go to water it. Now he's going to have plenty of room to develop his roots and just kind of grow from there. And he looks good. Now, just don't forget, uh, spider plants do have the little rosettes that come off the sides. Uh, this one has not done that yet. I think he was too pot bound to be able to do anything. So now he'll have plenty of room to grow out and kind of start putting off little rosettes there for me. Uh, now, if you do have those and you want to go ahead and start cutting them off, just kind of cut at the edge of where the stick or the little rosette comes off and you see the little baby plant uh, just kind of remove it from there uh, and then you can just take it and put it in a little pot uh, with soil in it and just kind of make sure the soil is relatively moist uh, that way it can start to develop roots there and then once you set him on there just give him a good water and he'll do uh, the rest on his own now that I've got him in there about where I want him I will just add water uh, enough that it will come out the bottom ensuring that I've uh, got all the roots wet. Uh, now, since I've already watered them before, I'm just gonna add just a little bit there just to make sure I can take out any other bubbles that are down in there. I don't wanna water them too much uh, because I don't wanna invite root rot in there. And actually, if you have watered it, uh, I would wait maybe about a day or so. Just kinda pack them down in there to help ease out any air bubbles. And then he can stand about a day or two uh, before you add any water down in there. Well, guys, I guess that's about it. Like I said, uh, just put him in a eastern facing window. That's where I have mine. And that allows him to have plenty of morning sunlight. And the rest of the day, you won't have to really worry about anything, especially around the hottest part of the day. So uh, a northern facing window are good for some spider plants or an eastern facing window. I wouldn't go west and I wouldn't go south because you'll burn these guys up. They like room temperature, so don't get anything uh, any close to any drafty windows or air vents because in the summertime you may dry them out and in the wintertime you definitely will. So make sure that you are mindful of that when it comes to placement. These plants are really good at you know cleaning air for us but one or two will uh, help cut back on some toxins for you so they are good plants to have in that form right there. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.